All right, these are the five things that every teacher needs to know right now. Hey class, Mr. G here today, going over five topics of things that we we forget. And we're in that time of the year where we need to remember some of these things because it's we're in that dead heat. Uh, I'm filming this for the March. I'm filming this for basically March when we're, we're in that dead zone. There's no break. You're just in that dry heat of now until spring break or just after spring break. Some of you watch this and you, you know you have those like eight weeks left of the school year, eight to ten weeks, depending on where you're at. And you need to keep in mind some of these basics to get through that because the kids are driving you nuts. And we forget these things, either newbies, uh, first year teachers, veteran teachers alike. We all We all need to remember these. First and foremost, number one, these are not your kids. And the reason that I'm doing this video is because of what happened to me over the past weekend. I, I was out to dinner and there was a family sitting just to the side and they had a son who was about 10 to 12 years old. Kids sitting there at the table just glued to the iPhone. That is his entire existence. He's, he's just glued into the iPhone. And from that, in front of him, they brought over him just plain butter noodles. And I know some kids are picky and that, you know, I don't want to harp on anybody's palate, but refusing to eat until he was brought a tray of grated Parmesan cheese to toss on top of it. Kid's 10 years old. There's, there's, there's a, there's, I don't get that. Uh, and then, got worse mom had to sit there and hand feed him so he ate 10 years old at least i think it was actually closer to 12. and then as i went to go leave dad takes over and dad's putting the fork in his mouth and keeping a hand under it so that he doesn't spill it on his little boy oh boy's 10 years old There's, these aren't your kids you didn't raise them you're not their parent and we got to keep that in mind that Sometimes we had a student who comes from a house where parents are just, there's no good term for this. They're just, they lack. And it's completely transparent that you see that it's because your parents are just not there or they don't know how to parent or they don't know anything about structure. And we have to deal with that fallout because of the bad, the bad habits that were trained in them ahead of time. So again, these are not your kids. We, we try and we spend all of our time, our effort to make these kids uh, these brilliant young versions of, of idealistic society. We want them to be engaged in society. We want them to be knowledgeable want to have them engage in everything that that's around them but they're not because that foundation was never built in the first place and that's not what and that's not what we did that's what we got put in front of us and we had to work with what we got which leads me into the next one which is knowledge is free but it's not mandatory so we can provide our students with as much information as we possibly can give them all the tools that we want differentiate that instruction as many ways that we possibly can but if the kid is not engaged in the information, they are not receiving the information, you all need to remember that from first year teachers to veteran teachers. Sometimes the kid's just not gonna do it because that's not their thing. Um, ha had a discussion with, again, I teach in I teach upper upper level, older, older kids. Me and a colleague, we were discussing and he, he was telling me about how he was talking to the kid that the dad is a truck driver, owns a couple trucks himself, like has his mini fleet. Mom was an EMT uh, worker and the kid has the resources to do any of those jobs if he wanted to go into them. But he doesn't want to go into them. Fully support that. That's not the job that you want. I'm not going to push you on a job that you don't want. But he doesn't have any direction. He doesn't know where to go. He doesn't know what to do. But he knows that he's going to do it by his own means, and that's all he's going to do. So until he understands that focus, any other knowledge that we want to give to the kid is just going to fall on deaf ears because the kid is not ready to accept the information. He's not ready to accept the knowledge. And again, that is not our problem. We did not create that problem. That roadblock is not put there because of something we did. That roadblock is because that is the way the kid processes information. Which leads me to number three. Up to number three at this point. Do one through these fast. Sometimes we have to learn through failure. You get a bad foundation with number one. Next one, number two, because of the bad foundation, the kid doesn't want to gain knowledge to make the foundation relevant. So then you get to number three, which is sometimes you got to fail. I was a student who had to fail. I had to get to a midpoint in uh, during, during a semester. We get to that midpoint. I had to have a 40 or a 60. I had to know that I had an F in the class. And once I knew I had that F in the class, 
it was easy sailing for me because I got a B or got an A out of the class at the end of it because I got all those assignments turned in. I bust my butt to get everything done. And that's what I had to do. I had to go through that process to understand why we do the things we do. So middle school for me was just that. I had to fail everything and then understand why I failed it and know that from that, I had to then gain that knowledge. So I had to go through that process. That was my process. Failing to understand I had to gain the knowledge to understand that that was the foundation that need to be built for me. So sometimes that's just the process that the kids have. And we have to understand that, but sometimes having that one-on-one -on -one with the kid, having that talk and just say, do you need to fail so that you understand why you need to pass? Some kids have that, need that talk. I've had that talk with several of my students before. I was like, here's where you're at. You're not passing, definitely failing. And I don't, I don't, I, I'm helping you what I can. I, I'm giving you the assignments. I'm trying to help you out with tutorials, but that's up to you, man. If you can't, cross the bridge i can't throw you over the over the valley i'm strong but i got i got limits going into number four now meet the kids where they are sometimes having that conversation again this is I, i'm just kind of continuing down the mentality path here sometimes it is having that one-on-one -on -one conversation with a kid and or the parent and just say this is where your child is at this is where we want them to be and I can give them the path, but I can't walk it for them. And having that one-on-one, -on -one, cut and dry, black and white, this is what needs to happen. Uh, I was reading a piece in the Times uh, this past, read it yesterday, that they had a group of 12 people and they read, so 12, a collection of 12 voters over the course of the last year and who voted for who, we're not getting into that. But at the end of the day, they all had the basic same thing that we don't want, we don't want everything perfect, we want it better. And that was the key. And I think this is relevant to that, is that you need to know that you don't need to make it perfect, but you need to make it better than what it is. And sometimes a parent is at a loss, same as a student, the student is at a loss because they don't know why they need it. And they know that like, I'm supposed to have straight A's because if I have straight A's, I will get into college, I will graduate from college, I will have a perfect job, I'll make money, and I'll be a, be a good point on, on society. And it's not that, sometimes it's, we want you to be better than what you are today. And knowing that the, it's a little step, it's not this gigantic jump. They have to surmise everything of, of their existence to, to get to this next level. It's, it's too much. But giving it that little step, I'm just going to give, move up. Because if you move up now, you'll move up again from that and keep going up and up and up. And that's the goal, is to continue moving that forward momentum. And now cycling back a little bit, the kids don't need to be like their parents. Sometimes, and I've had this almost more times than I can count, parents who, this is what I expect from my child, this is what I want to see done. Um, I, I will we'll do a story time in just a second on that. The kid has their own identity and has their own personality and that's what I, I strive to bring out. I take information that I get from parents, from peers, from other teachers even, and I build with that, but I don't make it the goal. This is where you're supposed to be. That's pointless. You're not, don't waste your time trying to turn something into something it's never gonna be, because that's just a, a moot point altogether. But using information to help drive getting to that goal and making sure that that student or even the parent even, they're driving the car. You are simply a navigator who's trying to work along with them. I'm not driving your car for you. That is your task at hand. That's what you are supposed to do. You are the one in control, but I'm trying to give you some help getting there. You both want We both want to reach that goal. Again, this is a conversation I have with parents. A lot of the stuff that I say, this is exactly the same wording I have with students, with parents, with administrators. I don't change myself because there's no point in me changing me to make somebody else happy. Be happy for myself, which is, again, a bonus tip. And having the parents have that realization that their kid might not, might not do that because their skill level works really well over here. Don't say that they don't have the skill level for this. They don't have the skill level for X and they have a skill level for Y. I just tell them that I'm seeing a lot of really good growth over here in Y. So, I, I, I mean, this is a good idea. It might do some other stuff to help supplement or help to make a well-rounded student. Again, I'm never discounting X and what that parent wants, but I'm taking them down the path of like, here's a plan B that might not be perfect, but Y is really good and it helps X. Something to think about, just a suggestion. Because sometimes it's those suggestions. A parent doesn't want to be told what to do. We don't want to be told what to do, especially if we're getting stuff from the district level and they're like, you have to do this and it's due yesterday. I hate that, we all hate that. And a parent is the same way. Sometimes we have to give that parent just a little bit of nugget of information that can help them get to the goal that they want 
They want for their kid. They want for themselves. Benefits everybody at the same time. Again, we are partners. We are not enemies. And I try to reiterate that to as many people as I possibly can, that we're all working together. And we're all trying to make a better scenario out of everything. Wrapping up, sometimes we all need to hear this. I need to hear this myself sometimes. So it's like, like a mini tutorial therapy session for me too. So in the comments, if you got more stuff to add to this, put that down in the comments, continue this conversation, make sure that we all understand that we're all on the same page, that we're all collectively working together. And that's a, that's a strong goal for us all to have. Don't discount the thoughts that you have. Don't discount yourself. Don't discount your students. Don't discount your parents. We're all working together. Keep that everything rising up so we're all working and everything comes out nice. That's what we're all going for. All right, five simple tips plus the bonus tip. Hope that was good for you guys today. So I'm going to wrap up class like I always do. Don't forget, get the message out there to as many teachers, friends, peers that we possibly can. Share this uh, out there with the masses, educating everybody. That's the goal. That's my goal. That's your goal. That's all of us working together, trying to make a better society overall. If you had a question, comment, or concern, raise the hands in the comments below, just like I said just a little while ago. And uh, don't forget, I'll see you guys next class. I thought this would be a good thing to put out right now. Um, love to know your tidbits. Toss them down below. Give me something to read. I like, I like responding to you guys. It's a lot of fun for me too. Other than that, I'll see you guys next class. Until then, later guys.